Arlen here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. And I'm just zipping on along, aren't I, this week? <laughs> uh, I'm going to be doing my little cozy corner here and as you can see, I've pretty much got it set up but I do have a couple of other things that I want to do to it. One is to make a funky bow. So we haven't had a funky bow tutorial in a day or two, maybe like a day. So we're going to do a 12 loop funky bow tutorial in this one, very quick one. Uh, I probably won't do go through the whole bow doing the tutorial. I'll get us started and then put us into fast motion and finish it up. But I do want to make a funky bow for this lantern, a funky bow topper. Or, Kind of a half swag i'm really not going to do a whole lot to the bow except that i'm going to attach this to one side and have it hanging down one side of the lantern and as you can see i don't know whether you can see or not let me see if i can lift this puppy up here i've got my glass owl snug down in there surrounded by fairy lights so he looks really cute in there and it makes this lantern super heavy so I just want to make a quick funky bow, kind of a muted in color funky bow. I don't want bright and, and in your face funky bows. I want just a subtle funky bow because that is where that lantern is going to sit. And as you can see, I've got my little cherry tree sat right there, sitting right there. That's good, some good grammar for you, huh? And I will get back at the end and show you. You can see the picture. That's what Stacy made me for Christmas. And then there's a, a scroll piece above it. And then the little bird below the picture. And those two candlesticks I got from, where did I get those, you guys? Home Goods, I think. And then just pictures of the girls and Chris and myself. And my mom's bridal Bible is up there. And then that little sweet little girl with the, with the prayer on her. Well, it's not really a prayer, but it just says, your life was a blessing, your memory a treasure. You are loved beyond words and missed beyond measure, and she is. Uh, but this was her bridal Bible here, and then I just have a, like one little lone candle light sitting up there, and then a cross, faith, hope, love, just to bring in the colors of spring, and again, another place that came in my set of four. So... Uh, let's see, and then I have a little two-tiered tray that I may make up to sit right there. <clears throat> All right, here are, that's what I'm going to tie it on the lantern with, the four ribbons I've chosen. There's my scissors. I was, I have, I brought in these and I was looking all over the place with these before I sat down. <laughs> I couldn't find them. So anyway, these are uh, the three colors of ribbons that I have. For this funky bow and like I said it's just subtle and this is going to be hanging on it so you can kind of see I'm trying to bring the blue out of this a little bit it's a green but it's a blue green so I'm trying to bring the blue pull the blue out or the teal out you know so that was my thinking with choosing these colors so I have them all lined up here and I know I have a at least I thought I brought over a pipe cleaner and I did, yay. All right, and I just have my tape measure. So here we go. Uh, I'm gonna want my, I'm just gonna set this here like this. If you see any dust behind you, please excuse it. If you see any dog tumbleweeds flying behind you, please excuse them. I am trying to get done my decorating and I have not vacuumed and it is a hot mess in here. So there's dust everywhere but please excuse it anyway all right as i said four strips of ribbon of each type three times four three different ribbons times four pieces equals a 12 loop funky bow each each strip equals one loop i've already dovetailed the ends so really i just need to fold this right in half this is very very heavy ribbon and I was just gonna make it out of this, but I was afraid, I was really afraid I wouldn't be able to hold it and I ran out. So that just solved that problem. So I had just enough to make four strips. So anyway, I'm gonna measure out five and a half inches for a loop, I'm gonna scrunch it together, go to that back tail and twist. 
okay? Because this is an even numbered looped bow, we're gonna go all the way through the pattern. Really the only bow that I make that I switch my loops, the loop direction every time is my nine looper. My 12 loop, 16 loop, and 20 loop, I do it this way. I go all the way through the pattern once with the loops pointed in one direction. Then the next time through the pattern, they go the other direction. So again, I picked it up, folded it in half, found five and a half inches for the loop, scrunched it in and turned that back tail to the front. And then again, this is the third time, five and a half inches, scrunch it together. Go to that back tail, no matter if it's one or two sided ribbon, it's texturally different sometimes. So I just, and it also helps the, the tails to separate. So there we go, there's our first three ribbons in these, this 12 loop funky bow. Next, so we're gonna go through this pattern four times. The next time we're gonna turn the loop down from center, center being my thumb. If you picture my thumb as being the center of the bow. So we're gonna go down from center this time through the pattern. Again, go to that back tail and twist. And then next, down. Five and a half inches, turn it down. Scrunch it in. And twist. And I'm letting these ribbons kind of scrunch back into my the crook of my fingers. And, the, and as I go, they just kind of slide on in there. Okay, next. After this one, I'm gonna go ahead and speed through the next two. Five and a half inches and turn it. Scrunch it in there. This is pretty stiff ribbon too. One of you guys gave me this lovely ribbon. And twist. Okay, now here we go. I'm going to speed through the next two times through the pattern. This time, it's going to be the loop is going to be pointed up from center. Next time, it's going to be pointed down. And then I'll be back when I'm ready to tie this thing together. All righty, here we go. Here's some spivvy music. <laughs> be right back. Then the most important part of any bow is the fluffing. So I'm gonna take some time here in fast motion and I'm just gonna fluff it up. But I will say, as you're doing your fluffing, pull your, pull your uh, loops forward and up and let them intermingle with one another. Separate your tails, even if you need to put, you know, put your bow down for a second. And I try to separate my tails sometimes but just, I, I try to find every single loop, touch every single loop and pull it up and make it full and get your hand all the way inside there and make this, the more fluffing you do, the bigger and prettier your bow will be. So next thing I wanna do is go ahead and tie the ribbon into the back of this bow that I'm gonna tie this onto the lantern with. So here's a long piece of just the cream. Kind of find the middle, kind of go right side down and snug that in. And you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and put this right into the back of this bow, right side down again. Not that there is a right side, but it is kind of bowing one direction. I'm gonna go ahead and put that down in there too. Probably not using many flowers in this at all. No flowers probably. I just really now let's see if I can get this. I want the swaggy thing to be down this side of the the uh <laughs> lantern. Okay, there we go. That looks like a hot mess right now, but trust me, we're gonna fix it. <laughs> I'm gonna let it just 
just hang on the floor. That's kind of pretty. I really like that. All right, let me do some major fluff in here. I'll be, I'm going to put you into fast motion as I do some fluff, and I'll be right back. And all I'm really going to do right now is I'm going to take this and just some blue flowers. Honest to goodness, you guys, that is about all I'm going to do with this. This is just an accent lantern. Just a little something, something. Alrighty, and there we go. Just a little something, something. Looks pretty. I bought this, these little angels, and I actually bought them to go in here, but they didn't fit. And they are solar angels, so they light up at nighttime because of the light that comes in the door there and the windows is just enough to, to light these girls up. I think they're supposed to be outside. I don't know. I got these from Hobby Lobby. I don't have the price tag on, but they're in their, in their spring shop and they weren't cheap. I, I got them 50% off, of course. But they were, I would say $20, you know. I think and they just sit right over here by my little cherry tree and come on in the evenings they're so pretty so I got those and then I just have this little family box I've had that there's nothing in there it's just empty and I just have it kind of sitting sitting up there cattywomp and the cherry tree as I said and then I just put one of these little wreaths on this little corner uh, this is where I had that other base and you can see the other vase is over there in the foyer, and you can see why I did not want that other vase here. I moved it over in another corner in this in the living room here. But you can see why I didn't want, like, it would look like two vases were sitting next to one another, and I didn't want that. And now, I'll tell you, the more and more I look at this little two-tiered tray, I really don't want to do a whole lot with this. So I just want to do something very, very simple with this. So I'm going to get a blue dot here. I'm sorry, my legs are starting to cramp. Oh, I've got a lot going up on, on up on this table, and I really don't need a whole lot else going on up there. So I may just simply leave these blue flowers. This is a little willow tree figurine, just prayer of peace. And I want her, maybe, just to sit right in the middle, like that. And honestly, I really and truly don't want to do much more than that to it. I thought I would want to add a bunch more. I can put one up here. I don't think I want to. This little tray speaks for itself. Look how pretty it is. Why do I want to put a bunch of stuff on that to cover it up? I don't. I have a couple of little things here that I might put on this little to cover up the yuckiness of this black base of this uh, cherry tree. Make it look a little prettier. And that will be that, my dear friends. So let me turn you around here and we're gonna do some final words and call this one done. Yeah. Okie dokie, you guys, there we go. We're all finished. And I'm super happy with how it worked out. I really am. I love doing stuff like this. This is what makes my day, you know? I love to decorate. I would much rather do a vignette like this than pretty much anything else. I really do enjoy the arranging and decorating part of my country craft corner. 
channel here. <laughs> but anyway, that's it. So in truth, I only have one more little place that I need to decorate. I need to decorate that little cream colored bike and then the tabletop above it. Like that little, uh, I have a little uh, milk glass dish with a little Boyd's bear and I have a couple of Boyd's bunnies that I found in my coffers that I'm gonna be putting a little bow on and you know, I'm gonna do a little vignette over there. So that's it, you guys. And then after that, I'm done. And then I'm gonna take a few days and get this house cleaned up and then I'll come back probably next week, uh, early next week with my home tour. I don't know what I'm gonna call it, whether it'll be country home tour or, you know, uh, something like that, I'm not sure. It's not really spring. This side of the house is definitely spring. This side of the house, I, you know, I'm ready for spring. Uh, but the other side is more of my, my primitive, not primitive, but my country decor. So I don't know, I might, that's why I say I may just, you know, call it my country home tour. So regardless, this one, so let me just say that I hope that all is well with everyone and that those of you who are struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope that you have someone there with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day, making the very, very best out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or where it should be. I love you all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around, and I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And with all that said, I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.